On October 3, 2018, the pro-LGBT Synod on the Youth started at the Vatican with a new Mass. During this ceremony, Francis held a strange-looking staff. The backstory is that this staff was given to Francis in Rome on August 11th. According to the CNA, the staff represents Jesus crucified with arms joined by a nail. But one only needs to look at it and realize this staff looks totally bizarre and out of place. Many have commented that it looks nothing like a cross at all. You can barely see what is supposed to be Jesus. I believe this staff is not just a strangely designed cross, as the CNA would have us believe, but actually an occult item. It's a crucifix twisted and bent into the form of a witching staff, specifically something known as a stang. Stangs are long rods with a forked end and often have a screw between the two ends. This is from an article written by a witch. Quote, to give it added function, some witches put a candle between the tines or screw a hook into the wood to hang a lantern from. This is practical as well as representing the light of cunning and wisdom. Notice how Francis' staff has a nail between both ends. This is a print of an occult ritual involving a stang and a cross. The stang represents what is called the horned god in witchcraft. The Wiccan ritual, I believe that the fork represents the goddess and then the staff, the phallic part, <laughs> represents the god, the horned god. And it's like, it's a very, one of the, it's a very important tool, at least for me and some other witches, because the sting, um, how it forks, what has it has, either the two or the three, um, it represents like the horn god, and also like with most deities that have horns and stuff, they seem to be very powerful and very strong. In witchcraft, the horned god doesn't usually represent a particular entity, but instead is more like a title. This is from an article written by a witch. Quote, One quick way to settle a lot of confusion is to remind people of this. These terms in question are types of deities or titles of respect. Horned God is a type of Godhead, not one specific God. So any pagan God with horns could be the Horned God. Quote, Some of the more well-known Horned Gods include Pan and Cernuius. Modern witches often still worship the entities of old, like Zeus and Horus. Listen to this clip of a modern witch. The last belief is obviously that the deities are actually a higher power. They're kind of all around us, like how people kind of see other gods and goddesses, one for every single aspect of life, because obviously there's multiple deities. Below her video, she even has a list of ancient pagan gods that a Wiccan can follow. A horned god in paganism usually has an affinity with sex and carnal desires. Quote, To ancient pagans, gods with horns were related to the wild, and man's primal nature. They would often be associated with fertility, the virile male embracing his carnal desires without the imposition of social codes or mores guiding his behavior. This is relevant because on October 3rd, the pro-LGBT Synod on the Youth, which is taking place in Rome, began, and it happened to begin on the feast of the Roman god Bacchus. This is from the 2018 Pagan and Wiccan calendar. It shows the Feast of Bacchus on October 3rd, the same day the Synod started. Here's another source saying that the feast is indeed on October 3rd. Bacchus is the Roman version of the Greek god Dionysus. They both represented orgies, sex parties, and homosexuality. The Romans borrowed their gods from the Greeks and gave them different names. So Bacchus and Dionysus are the same entity. Look how some hymns use their names interchangeably. Quote, Dionysos, bull-faced god conceived in fire. Basarius and Bacchus, many named master of all. Also, listen to this hymn. Quote, many named, frenzied Bacchus, bull-horned, conceived in fire. Bacchus could definitely be described as a horned god. Not only that, but Bacchus slash Dionysus also succinctly represents the LGBT movement. Out.com even did an article about 20 LGBT Greek gods, where Bacchus slash Dionysus was listed. Quote, Best known as the Greek god of wine, Dionysus was also the god of intersex and transgender people. Male lovers of the god included the satyr, Ampelos, and the famously handsome Adonis. I believe the feast day of Bacchus slash Dionysus was chosen on purpose to begin the Synod on the Youth. 
Francis is dedicating this heretical pro-LGBT synod to the demon Bacchus, a false Roman god that represents the essence of the LGBT movement. Rome is no longer Catholic. It is pagan, and a pagan ritual is happening in plain sight. The prophesied great apostasy is happening now. Francis is not a Catholic, and he is not the Pope. He is a false shepherd and an occultist. He is using his blasphemous witch's staying to cast a demonic spell to make people more accepting of this pro-LGBT synod. Francis's staff is a witch's staying and highly symbolic. By a crucifix being unrecognizably twisted into a witch's staying, it symbolizes the twisting of Catholicism into total paganism. By using the staying at the opening ceremony, it shows he is dedicating the synod to the horned god. And by having it on the feast of Bacchus, it shows specifically he's dedicating the synod to the horned pagan god Bacchus slash Dionysus, a pagan god known for sexual perversion, homosexuality, and transgenderism. And there's an additional connection to the feast of Bacchus, since both the feast of Bacchus and the new mass are celebrated by drinking wine. The wine in the new mass is simply wine and not transubstantiated, since the Vatican II church removed the words, Mysterium Fide, or Mystery of Faith, from the consecration formula. The Vatican has replaced the mystery of the Catholic faith with the Bacchus slash Dionysus mystery religion, the Christian cross with a pagan stang, and Jesus with Bacchus. <laughs>